Well, hello, hello, federal employees. I hope you're having a fantastic day and ready for it to get even better. So let's dig right in today's topic, which is your bridge. The FERS supplement, your bridge, if you are retiring before age 62, a small little assistance, a bridge that no one else really enjoys on the SERS system, the CSRS system, or even on the private side, it really just doesn't exist. So count yourself lucky, and we're gonna go over to the details, how it works, how to be eligible, how much it actually pays out, and all the details in between. So let's get into it today. Okay, so I've got my list. So I don't miss any of the details that I want to share with you. Okay, so first, to be eligible for this supplement. They call it the FERS supplement or the Social Security supplement. Lots of weird names for it, but it's relatively unknown. So if you know it well, if you know all the things I'm about to share today, you're probably gonna be in the top 5% of the knowledgeable federal employees on this benefit. So, count yourself lucky. Okay, so to be eligible for this benefit, it may sound like a no-brainer, but you have to be under the FERS system for the FERS supplement, okay? The CSRS folks, those people that are still under that system are not eligible. You have to be under the FERS system. Okay, and you also have to be eligible for an immediate retirement or an immediate annuity, okay? So basically, the only two groups of people that are eligible are those that have 30 years of service and are at least their minimum retirement age, right? 55 to 57, depending on your, your date of birth, and 30 years of service, or age 60 with 20 years of service. Now, I know you're saying, hey, at 62 and five years of service, I have an immediate retirement. Why can't I get my first supplement? Because the supplement stops at age 62, so you would not be eligible. So the only two groups, again, like I said, you have to be eligible for an immediate annuity. So basically, at age 60, with 20 years of service, or your minimum retirement age with 30 years of service. Okay, so that is how you are eligible. So this is how it is calculated. So this is basically, I'll go through how it's calculated. So you could go for you, you could do the math, say, hey, for me, this is what it would actually look like. Okay. So the equation looks like this. You take your years of credible service, so 20 years or 30 years, however many years you have paid into the retirement system under the first system. And this includes military time. Um, if you have bought that back, um, you have to do some research on that if that applies to you, but um, just to keep this as general as possible, I won't dig into that right now. So you take your years of credible service and you divide that by 40, okay? So let's say if you have 40 years of credible service, divided by 40, that'd just be one. But if you have 30 divided by 40, that's 0.75, right? That's the math. Then you times that, whatever you get out of that, by your social security benefit at age 62. So if you're looking at your social security benefit statement, your statement for social, social security, if you don't have one already, I would go to the ssa.gov, the social security website, do a login and get one. At the top right corner of that page, it's gonna show your what benefits you're gonna receive at your full retirement age. That's between 65, 67, depending on your birthday, okay? On the second page, there's gonna be a line item that says your benefits at age 62. For these calculations, that's the number you want to use, okay? Whatever that number is for age 62. So I'll go over it again. You take your years of credible service divided by 40 times your age 62 social security benefits. So you might realize that unless you have 40 years of credible service, which most people don't, you're not gonna totally get your entire age 62 benefits because let's say you have, if you have less than 40, let's say 30, 30 divided by 40 equals only 75% of your age 62 benefits. So it's honestly not going to be as much as you probably would like, but it will be something. So be grateful because most people just don't have anything, right? So be grateful for this opportunity to bridge the gap between, let's say you retire at age 58, right? Because you met your minimum retirement age and you have 30 years. 
you have five years before you can even think about starting Social Security at age 62. Age 62 is the minimum age that you could start Social Security. So this bridge, this first supplement, the Social Security supplement, will bridge that gap by paying you a portion of your Social Security benefits at age 62. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. That at age 62, this supplement will stop no matter what. You cannot continue. It will not continue. Even if you don't start Social Security right at that time, your normal Social Security benefits, it will not continue. You could start it right then or you don't have to. You could wait. But this supplement will end at age 62. So keep that in mind. Because the next gap that many people have to fill, right, there is the gap between retirement, let's say if you retire before age 62, and then when you can start Social, Social Security, for, but for many people it doesn't make sense right at age 62 to start because you get more every year by waiting. So when you look at your plan, when you look at all your numbers, say, okay, I'm going to be getting X from my pension. I'm going to be getting X from Social Security when I start it. I'm going to get X for the first supplement, my Social Security supplement. I have X in my TSP. Do the numbers work? If I add everything out, do the numbers work for me? Maybe you have a military retirement, right? Add that in. Whatever you have in your life, kind of work all the numbers together and say, okay, with the first supplement, does this make my plan work? Do I need to work a few more years to boost my TSP a little longer? What do I need to do to make this work? So I hope this kind of gives you an idea of how the supplement works and how it works in your retirement plan. And one more thing before I forget. So just like Social Security, if you didn't know already, Social Security, a huge portion of it can be absolutely taxable if you make over certain amounts and it's pretty low amounts. So for many federal employees, because you have a pension, because you have a TSP you're going to be drawing out of, generally the traditional side is where most people have their money, that's all going to be taxable income, basically all of it. So once you start drawing Social Security as well, you're going to be popped up into some taxable brackets where you're going to get taxed on. So make sure you plan that in as well. So the reason I brought that up is because Social Security is taxable and before you're your full retirement age, 65 to 67, you can actually get reduced benefits if you make over certain amounts, if you're still working. The same applies to this first supplement. So let's say you retire from federal service at 58, but you go in the private side and get another job. If you start your first supplement, this can be reduced down to zero if you make too much in your job. So make sure you kind of keep that in mind. And of course, the supplement can be included in your taxes depending on how much you make, either from your pension or working another job, all of these things that really keep it exciting for you about your benefits. I know, lots of details, I know, believe me. <laughs> I study this, I work with feds all the time, it's a lot of details, but by learning, by being here and really educating yourself about your benefits, you will reap rewards for years and years and years. Even your kids, your your posterity, your legacy will reap the rewards of being prepared and just thinking through your life stages so that you are ready for whatever happens. So I hope this is helpful. Please check out all my content, whether that's my courses, my articles on FedSmith, my website. I have a ton of great stuff for you as federal employees to get the most out of your benefits. So you have no excuse, no excuse to really not educate yourself and get the most out of it. And if you approach retirement without being prepared, shame on you. Because there is so much out there, you just have to look. It will take a little effort, but it will be worth it. So again, I hope this is helpful. And I'll talk to you next week. And again, thank you for making it to the end of my video, the end of my podcast. I hope this brought value to you and your life. My goal with this content is to bring as much value to as many people as I possibly can. So please, if you can, if this brought value to you, please show your support, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, comment, give me feedback about what you wanna hear about, what you wanna learn about, and how you can get more value out of this and so that I could do the very best I can to make this the best channel for my viewers, for my listeners, the very best I can. So again, thank you for being here and investing in yourself and in your future. And I will see you next week.